Hey, welcome to this computer. It's gonna be Arch Linux B Plasma. That's the look we get. And I've uh, installed a minimal version, meaning not too much of all these extra groups of Plasma. So I install the things I need when it comes along. Then this video is the topic of the video is actually going to be Arch Linux. Yes, we have, um, we took some very big steps with Carly. So take a look at the Carly 5 project. If you're into that, arclinuxiso.com. And in that respect, we have to, and it's always a good thing, we have to download Arch ISO to have another look at it. That's the one from February 2001. And I've installed KTorrent, so that was extra thing I had to do because of the fact that I started with a minimal one, right? And he's going to download the ISO for me. So that's that. I was talking about Cardi. What's this all about? ArcoLinuxISO.com. The idea there is actually to start from Arch ISO. So at the beginning, we started in Cardi 1. It's a story actually, it's kind of a series you can watch. And Cardi 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And in 5, we finally boot up into something in um, inside a graphical environment actually in four already but in five we're going to make sure that we whatever we've put on the iso we can also put on our system our ssd hard disk or whatever all right so this is quite a big step 15 articles in a row um, okay now we created an operating system right on the basis of Arch Linux, on the basis of Arch ISO. But um, we should check if the, if the fact is, is Arch Linux and is Arch Linux gonna be the same? Because we need to figure out permissions and all that. It needs to be correct, right? So it's going to stop for me now and remove this one and stop. Often these guys are still in here, in here so there as well we quit it. That's that, super F7. I have a virtual box that's ready. I have a template. I'm gonna change um, the clone first. I'm gonna change the settings in the clone. Since my setting here is actually okay, so I'll just click them so you can check what I have at this point in time currently. I have 16 and I only give five. I could give eight, right? 50-50. I'm gonna do this as a, a special choice. You'll see later on Arch Linux D. You can install Arch Linux on an old machine, bias on a new machine, you will fine, right? So I'm gonna enable fake because VirtualBox is a fake environment and that's why it's never gonna be 100% trustworthy. It's not because that it works on VirtualBox that it's gonna work on your hardware, the two separate things. And it's um, often happens that the things that are not working in VirtualBox are working on the hardware. So it's still trial and error. You know what I say always, trial and error. I have eight cores for fine, 50-50 again. Enable this thing for Inksy. Acceleration, display, all up this time. Today I'm gonna do this, not acceleration, that's not uh, necessary. I'm gonna say okay, check if this is okay. Because sometimes VirtualBox, depending on the settings you use, he changes it back to, to VM and I hear people say, Eric, this is awful, this is a very small screen. Sure, because of the setting, you have the wrong setting. So this is gonna work, that's gonna work and then off we go. Now I need to tell them where the storage is, optical empty, choose disk file. In the downloads, I have something here and I open it up. Now our information. We want you to grow into the operating system Arch Linux. And in ArcLinuxD.com, we have phases. You can check that out, learning phases. And in phase five, we go for start here. Okay, you check this out. And then you have a decision to make. You have an old machine, you have a new machine, or you have virtual box. We are now going to this one, phase one UFI. I just clicked it, ticked it on. 
that we're going to fake that we are on a new machine. So this is the rule for me. This is the code for me. This is what I'm going through. And the first thing you can all read all that, etc., etc. The first thing you should look out for is this thing. Everything with a blue uh, border here and some shadow around it. That's going to be our cue to type something in the terminal. You want to have some kind of keyboard and often people already know what a keyboard is. But if you don't, it's all explained here in the videos. But we're going not to make a lengthy video. We're just going to have a quick and dirty installation and choose our desktop and our desktop is here. Choose a desktop, 15 of them. All right, I'm moving this to screen two. Point of the exercise is to have another video, one and two, to have a look at all the permissions today, compare it with Carly. What permissions are not okay, where should I change them? And that's definitely gonna be our next target, our next job. That's Carly six, that's in a month. So Archlex, fine. We have it in, we double click it, and yep, it's gonna be on the second screen. As usual, I put it there. So in the videos, I have to move it to my first screen. And this, well, oh, that's too bad. Control R, I'm gonna reboot VirtualBox, Control R. This is UFI. If you don't see a nice logo of ArchLinux, then you know you're in UFI. That's important. So you can skip a lot of text that's on the website. You know with these lines that you are in UFI, you don't need to test it as they suggest on the wiki. First things first, so I'm actually gonna straighten myself in my chair. That's gonna be a lot of typing now. Load keys, here's the problem. Load keys, right? The A and the Q, the QWERTY stuff. So I have to look out for what I type now, but once I've done it, I'll have a Nazerti. Right, and there's a, a French, a fr, Latin and so on, and a DE, etc. So you figure out what keyboard you have and what to fill in. And then it's still, then it's okay. I mean, you just start typing whatever you see. We're scrolling down, 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 connect to the internet. We are connected on the internet. We're in a virtual box, it works. So why would I check that? It's gonna be okay. Time, date, CTL, set NTP. There can't be any typos and I'm pretty, Sure, I'm gonna make one. So we have to check again ourselves. CF disk, that's the first thing they say, but then you there's nothing blue anymore. You have to look what to do and you have to decide what to do as usual. GPT is UFI, DOS is BIOS. We set VirtualBox to be UFI, so I'm gonna say GPT, enter. Okay. We have some tips to wipe, wipefs, sgdisk, check out um, what it says there. And then they're gonna say new, 20 gigabyte, no, 550 MB, oops, 550 megabytes, right? So he divided, he took a slice of our hard disk and it says from there to there, sector stats much, we're gonna have a Linux file system, but the file system is wrong. So I'm gonna go to the type. It's actually an EFI, done. It says now EFI at the end. Okay, we're scrolling down. Now you can do lots of stuff. You can have a root and then a separate partition for home and another one for something else. But basically I'm gonna keep it very simple and stupid. That's always a good idea at first. New, the rest is this. The rest is the Linux file system. Whatever, just root, the slash, and home, and boot, and everything is on the, under there. The root, everything. So that's done. Linux swap, we're skipping that because this is a virtual box. It will have enough memory, but otherwise you follow the text here on the website. Okay, Linux swap. All right, move the selection to right. That's what they say. And are you sure you want to write the partition table to the disk? If there was anything on there, it's now gonna be overwritten. It's gonna be 
clean out and it's not accessible anymore. All right, so we have now a different partition. We have SDA, a real hard disk and SSD. One is a very, very small part and that's um, gonna be our UFI. It's gonna be FAT32, but he'll take care of that. We didn't have to say anything about it. And then we have the partition SDA2. And if we had a swap, we would have had SDA3, as you see in this image here. Here is an SDA3. Where was that the image I just saw? Here it is, right? Make swap and etc. All right. Format the partitions. Our next job, we're looking for the blue quarter, uh, borders, right? We're gonna make a file system that's gonna be called a, well, it will be a FAT, not called, it will be a FAT system, a 32 device SDA1. The first thing is the UFI, always. Second thing is, let me check if I, I shut down all my Discord stuff and all that, so that they were not interrupted. All right, it was still running. So Control F, we're back here, and the, well, the website is here. So I was typing that one, okay. We don't have a swap, so we're skipping the swap part, but we want to have a system, please, with extension four. This is what you have, right? This is all the possibilities, BT, RFS, uh, X4 is the most common one, I think. So X4, and we're going to go for device, not SDA3 as the website says. You need to have some, well, understanding, right? We don't have a three, we have a two. So common sense, enter. This all looks good. Scroll down. Mount the file systems is our next thing. So we're gonna mount, what are we going to mount? We're going to mount a specific device. Which device? Well, we've created SDA2, not three. Almost typed it wrong here, slash mount. Why slash mount? LS, LS root, we have a MNT, a mount folder. Where is it there? Behind lib64, you see MNT. So we're gonna tell to the, the Linux system, you're gonna mount a specific hard disk on inside the Pacific folder. That's an awesome tool, right? We're gonna mount, okay, that's not it. We are going to mount device SDA3 on the website, does not exist, SDA2, inside MNT, enter. Great, we can just go to CD MNT LS, we're inside. Lost and found is there. Okay, back out. We are going to make the directory. Well, actually, we could have stayed in. So LS CD MNT. In here is nothing, but we're gonna make a directory root. LS, there is a directory. So inside mount. We have a directory boot and now I'm gonna get out of here. So back with a tilt, I don't know if that's the word in English. We call this a tilde. We're going to the home directory. We're back in our own personal home directory. We are going to make, to mount actually, mount inside this boot directory that we've created a new device. The device we've just created is called SDA1, that's our boot or UFI partition and we're going to put it no typos in boot EFI and it says EFI does not exist right because I forgot to create it so make directory we forgot to make a sub level a level down mount boot was created so inside boot is also this thing arrow up arrow up enter Inside MNT boot EFI is now a partition device SDA1. 
and now we're off we're scrolling down again installation select the mirrors i better check this last time i was uh coming from japan i thought what the hell this is slow okay that's why so check it out where you live matters i would be downloading from australia it's on the other side of the world united states uh-huh i see belgium in the third line i am so pleased here it is belgium super x yes enter so with a hashtag in front of it it's just uh, gibberish for him he will not use it third line is the line from belgium let's see if that um, is fast enough otherwise you will change it's not because it's close it's fast no it's not all right scrolling down so mirror list we've done aha this is the most basic step ever pack a strap inside this directory that we have uh, mount there which is actually a device we're going to install packages like base base development linux kernel please would be a nice thing to have a linux kernel the linux firmware firmware and nano for later work with an easy editor all right typos okay and then we're going to install everything so we're downloading the speed is okay and everything is going to be put inside a particular folder we can have a look at later mount i'm scrolling down i see i need to do a fs tab later on so i'm gonna write to the system that linux knows sda1 is there sda2 is there maybe let's have a look quickly what is happening to the system right now we have a linux kernel you see it give me the list of mnt we have a complete linux system and this is going to be your future system and this is what i need to compare carly with a system permissions and all that okay so we are at gen fs tab generate me please a fs tab minus u and it's you can find it in mount and put it inside a folder well not a folder a file etc fs tab enter this is so important that i often do nano mnt etc fs tab just if this is wrong you won't be able to put right so there are some critical things that maybe it's best you check now we scroll down shroot that's a super super tool there are uh, tutorials online about it arch root well, it has to be written like that and then we are actually going inside this folder and in, in, in going in the future system that we'll have. Everything changes, colors change there. We have changed inside the folder mount and the rest does not exist. It's just this that exists. So the list here, this is the only thing that exists for him and we can do our thing here. So if computers break down, this is the way to fix them again. You can arch root or shroot into it and then change the name delete some nvidia packages or delete or add packages etc you are in control of course in the terminal right not anything graphical time zone since there is already something there in place we need to force it so don't forget the f user share zone info europe you can type a few letters and then the rest will come from itself with a tap etc local time enter local time no typo then the hardware clock sister ac all right scrolling down locale that's important for people so languages etc 
locale del gen. So list of locales, lists that are to be generated by the locale gen command. There, nothing is actually covered, maybe English, I don't know. I think nothing is actually the all the hashtags are present. I'm gonna look for ENUS. That's my choice to have everything in English. Why? Names, you need to know the technical name so you can Google and it's all better in English. So control X, yes, go. And then generate me this English thing. Done. And then the shorter alternative for the languages. Echo my language equals en ooh, small letters underscore big letters capital letters utf minus eight and then put it in etc locale dot conf echo language is equals uh, us etc done echo key map equals be uh, Latin one and we're going to put that inside etc v console dot off check 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 and scrolling down again <coughs> the website i need to figure out a host name i'm gonna go for the shorter alternative echo arch Linux super original and put it inside hostname done then we need to type a lot of things in the nano etc hosts what should we type there ip addresses 127.0001 tap tap i think maybe one tap is enough i did now two I won't break the system tap tap well okay here is better so local host and i'm gonna do a backspace okay local host fine no typos 127.0.0.1 enter well space no tap arch linux the names are always the same everywhere we're going to give it everywhere the same reference uh, that's wrong and then tap arch next done 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 check 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 control x yes enter right that's nano for us super interesting super easy intuitive network configuration this is something where we are going to defer or, or, or to say that to taken another step another way of installing the network because we are going to install later on 15 desktops and on them we use the network manager so put it in already and then enable it so you have internet now this is the thing where you say you want to have internet right now watch out for this capital M so we need to remember Let's make a mistake. Fail to enable unit. They say, what? What's wrong? Something else. That's it. Three links. That's the one you need to have. Init run by this is nothing anymore. Root. Give the password. Well, this is the password for root. Voila. Done. Bootloader. Very important thing. I sometimes forget a part of it or totally forget it you won't be able to boot you have to do it all over again or shrewd okay that's that grub since now we have the applications we have a grub install first install then grub install target equals x 86 underscore 64 what was that 64 dash efi boop, 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 boom. check efi directory equals 
and now we point to this one that's what the the one we've created right all right grub install error so let's check again grub install target Ooh, was that ugly thing there this thing let's check again efi directory equals boot efi enter that's better no errors reported that's what you need to see what you want to see then we have grub make the config please and the output is gonna be boot grub grub.cfg enter some lines scrolling down only do if you need it we're not gonna do that right now there is an, a sentence here um, oops where is this I'm on another window am I so this is plasma you have six windows I have six windows here it is so only if you need it not a part of the standard translation what if you're planning to switch SSD Ooh, SSDs yes correct with an SSD bay so I'm, I have 15 desktops I have 15 SSDs I switch them all with a bay if I do that I need to copy paste this one as well so make a specific boot directory and copy paste these lines and then, then I'm in the clear then I can work with SSDs and switch all the time but if you're on a laptop for instance I don't think you're gonna be opening up your laptop every time and switch SSD then well not for you and on VirtualBox it doesn't matter either so we're on exit exit uh, let me see if I did not skip it because otherwise we have to make the video again uh, no I've done that we've done this we're not doing all the this copy pasting over so we had at reboot okay exit we are back out of the shroot you see the red um, text there root again and we're going to unmount everything we were um, mounting two devices and we're gonna say get it out that's out reboot now this is an, an ah, okay fine no problem so grub is there that's good so we've done these three lines there grub is there that's cool of course we're not in graphical yet but we do hope if we type root and we type our password that we're in and we're in sudo should not be necessary because i'm root so pacman minus s y y u do we have internet yeah everything is fine yeah network manager is working that's what we want to know then I'm at the bottom of the page next step I'm on page 2 now phase 2 the actual installation of Arch Linux phase 2 scrolling scrolling he wants me to be root done that type in your password done that the multi lab can multi lip can be activated but we can do that later on with our Arch Linux tool for instance but uh, not now what we will do however we do not have bash completion so if you type some letters and then press tab normally it completes the word right it's not installed by default so I am installing it so next time when I boot in I log in as Eric I can then use my tab so that's done at point at this point I can't use it I am still root I need to log out and log in to use it user add okay uh, at the bottom of the text there is a blue border so it's that one that I should type user add minus M minus G this is a little bit concentrated and then all the groups come and I tend to type a space do not no space needed after the comma when, when typing text you do that a lot slashes and then your name your login name that you want to have 
let me check before we enter we're going for bash we can always switch back later to zsh a simple alias in Arclix to zsh done log out log in you have it um, password for Eric what is my password a very difficult one done then I would like to install sometimes some software would be nice so editor equals nano and open me up vsudo scroll down well and I'm using actually page down page down page down then you can go back up and you see here this line let me see if the website is all saying all this voila there's wheel all 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 so that's this line delete well you can delete the space as well Control x yes enter it's saved next time i can do sudo pacman minus s install me firefox otherwise i can't and i will be reported that i'm using administrative uh, rights of, of privileges or something like that so this time i'm gonna be eric i'm gonna log in as eric and this time i need to type sudo and i'm gonna see if i'm allowed to do this oh i can do that does it mean you can install stuff That does mean you can install stuff. So we're scrolling down on the website here. Eric has his um, password. Then it's up to next step. We're in phase three now. We still don't have anything graphical. So it would be great if we'd have something graphical. So that's phase three. Let's get graphical. Scrolling down, what do we need? Xorg, that's the name that's gonna provide us something graphical. Pseudo Pacman minus Xorg server then the xorg apps the xorg xinit and this is your choice if you want it or not the terminal from xorg enter 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 done we're scrolling we're scrolling then we need graphical drivers i would say as such a suggestion don't install anything just go with the kernel uh, see if the kernel figures out what uh, system what hardware you have and if you have something graphical sometimes you immediately need to have a nvidia and other times you need to have immediately linux lts so it's all up to you to see what system do i have is maybe installing sudo pacman minus s linux and then have a look it, it's working the bash completion you see linux top top and then you can say, I'm going to try Zen, I'm going to try Hardened, I'm going to try Linux LTS and see if it works. You have choices. Use the choices. But there's also NVIDIA. But like I said, first try out without. And there are different NVIDIAs. There is NVIDIA, which is, let's say, the, the newer cards. 390X is the older cards. And then there's even a 340. And um, also an NVIDIA for LTS, so the linux lts right it, it goes together with the linux kernel the one at the top here which i can't really show because there's no mouse in this terminal okay i'm scrolling in virtualbox you don't need to do anything super right no problems whatsoever we're going to get sudo pacman minus s a greeting engine lightm greets you welcomes you it's a display login manager that's what it is it has also settings so we keep on typing light dm and press on tap and we see light dm and then gtk stop again light dm gtk stop that's it i use the tap all the time you don't have to type everything in linux now what you have now have is a folder or lots of folders maybe and lots of files but it's not working it's not Activate it. Activating is done with sudo system ctl enable. And maybe if you've been watching some videos on Arclinux D, you say, oh, oh, 
that's the same thing. Now, I shouldn't be typing because I'm conservative with my energy. This is enough. Lightium. So now, when I reboot, Lightium says, oh, I'm uh, the one supplying here the display. So um, let's do some work. And we've added him a design, Light DM GTK Greeter is the design. And the other thing is setting some fonts and icons and all that, settings. So give me my mouse, okay, scrolling down. Choose your desktop. It's still not the time to reboot. I could reboot and I could also fix the problem then because behind Lightium at this point in time is nothing. There is nothing behind it. All right, so we have to decide. Desktop. I have no clue whatsoever to decide what desktop I would take. I have an idea. I'm going to take Plasma because of the fact for Carly, right? So I am following choices, choices that are here, installation of Plasma, click. So we have the website, five. We follow number five here, phase five UFI. That's what we've done. Then we go to six, we've done all that. Then we go to seven, we go through these XORG things. And then we're at a choice, choose any of these guys and then follow along. So up, oh, there we go, back to here. KDO Plasma, super simple. Get in the Lego blocks, sudo pacman minus s plasma. And it's of course a bunch, but it's okay, it's cool, we have time, there it is. It's actually not that much, 323 megabyte. So that's Plasma Meta. It's not what's set underneath, a few lines down. KDE Applications Meta, that is a lot of software. So on the Arglinx B ISO, that's the one we've omitted, we have not installed that one. And we are cherry picking. And it's easy to just simply type it. It does not take a lot of time to type this or copy even control C copy paste done. And you have whatever is in there, all the Lego blocks that are in there. And uh, the total is called KDE applications meta. All right, scrolling down, your installation can just end here. Then you add more applications to have a system suited to your needs. So basically, they're saying SR. But SR is something we know, right? SR is sudo reboot. Sudo reboot. Let's have a look. This is Arch Linux out of the box plasma kicking in in one. Nope, nothing. First password. One, two, three, four. Boom. We have ourselves a system an Arch Linux Plasma system. And it's fun to start from here and to tweak every little thing. And it's also a challenge because a lot of things will not work. A lot of elements will not work. And then you say, what Lego block would I have, what I need to have this or that functionality? And that's what we all have figured out uh, for you in Arch Linux B, it's all, it's all there in Arch Linux D as well, in the scripts, in the GitHub scripts, right? But it's uh, also a good idea to, if you have the time, to venture yourself into figuring out every little detail of an operating system. So that's it for me. Um, I'm gonna end the video here. Maybe I'm gonna make a succession video, how to spice things up, how to get um, the spices of Arch Linux in would be nice. I'm gonna try it, uh, Arch Linux uh, tweak tool for that. So um, I see you in a bit.